Welcome to our video edition of Learn with LBSI for the month of August 2021. For this month, we are going to provide an overview of projects within the Project Management module of SAP Business One. Projects allow you to assign project-related transactions, open issues, documents, resources, activities, and more. All this information that is assigned to the project will be easily accessible from the project module. Projects are very useful for keeping track of all of your business operations that relate to a particular job. To begin, let's navigate to Administration, System Initialization, Company Details to review the settings that need enabled in order to use projects. On the Basic Initialization tab and towards the bottom, you will need to make sure that you have the Enable Project Management checkbox checked. If you do not have the checkbox checked, then you will not be able to use projects within SAP Business One. Another initial setup module for projects can be found under Administration, Setup, Project Management, and Stages. In this window, you will be able to specify the specific stages for your projects. These generic stages will be used to define the stages for all of your projects. With the Project Management checkbox checked, and the stage is set up. Let's navigate to Project Management, Project, to display the main project module. The project screen is where you'll be able to see all the information that pertains to your specific project. In the header portion of the window, you will be able to enter in some general information about your project. You'll be able to designate if your project is an internal or external project via the corresponding radio buttons in the project type field. If your project type is set to external, you will be able to select a business partner in either the business partner code or name field. After selecting a business partner, the contact person field will populate with the default contact person that is assigned to the selected business partner. If your company uses territories, you will be able to assign a territory to your project in the territory field. Below that in the sales employee field, you will be able to select from the dropdown a specific sales employee to assign to the project. Following the sales employee field is the owner field, which is where you can select an employee to be the owner of the project. The last option on the left hand side of the header is the checkbox to include subprojects. Selecting this checkbox will add a new tab titled subprojects and will allow you to add multiple smaller projects that make up the main project. Moving on to the right portion of the header will be several additional fields that relate to your project. The project name field will allow you to enter in a specific name for your project. Next, in the project number field will be the numbering sequence for your projects and it will indicate the number for the current project. Below that in the status field will be a drop down selection where you can choose the current status of the open project. If you select stopped or finish, the current date will automatically be entered as the finish date. The start date, due date, and finish date all correspond to their respective dates. Following those dates is the open activities field, which will display the number of open activities that pertain to both the main project and any sub projects if active. The percent complete field will display the total percentage of completion for the entire project including subprojects if they are any present. The final field in the header is the financial project field. If your company utilizes any financial projects, you will be able to assign one to the project in this field. Please note that if you plan to assign time for employees against the project, you will need to assign a financial project to the project. With the header information out of the way, let's take a look at the overview tab. On the overview tab, you will be able to specify the amount of risk that is associated with the project by selecting a value from the risk level dropdown. You can even indicate which industry this project pertains to by selecting an industry from the dropdown. If the industry you are looking for does not appear in the list, you can press the define new option to add any additional industries to the dropdown. There is also a comment section where you can enter in any miscellaneous information about the specific project, like some specific instructions or guidelines that should be followed. 
In the main portion of the Overview tab will be a table that relates to the subprojects that are assigned to your project. It will show you the subproject name alongside the fulfillment percentage of each subproject. The status column will indicate if the subproject is either open or closed. With the Overview tab out of the way, let's move on now to the Subprojects tab. This tab will only appear if you have the Projects with Subprojects checkbox selected. On the Subprojects tab, you will be able to add new subprojects to your overall project. You have the ability to add an entirely new subproject by selecting the Add New Subproject button, or you can add a subproject that is similar to a previously added subproject by selecting the Add Subproject from Template option. After clicking on the Add New Subproject button, you will notice that the subproject screen is very similar to the main project screen. Since that is the case, we will only go over the new fields that do not appear on the main project screen. The subproject description field acts as the main project name for your subproject. You can also assign a specific type to the subproject by selecting a value in the subproject type dropdown. The parent subproject slash project number field will indicate the project number for the parent project or subproject. Next in the subproject contribution percentage field is where you can indicate how much of the total project the subproject covers. For example, if a subproject is planned to cover 25% of the parent project, then you would enter in 25 into this field. The next new fields are actual and planned costs. These are the fields where you can specify either the actual cost that was incurred for the subproject, as well as the estimated planned value of the cost that will be incurred for the specific subproject. The subproject, stages, and summary tab all function the same as they do on the main project window. More information about these tabs will be described for the main project window later on in the video. Back on the subprojects tab, once you start adding subprojects to your main project, you will notice that each of your subprojects will be listed in the main table portion of the tab. You will be able to view key information like the subproject start and end dates, as well as each subproject's planned and actual costs. Furthermore, you can see the percentage of how much of the parent project the subproject takes up in the subproject contribution column, and in the completeness percentage field, you will be able to view how much is completed of the current subproject. If you need to make any changes to your subprojects, you can click on the golden arrow next to the subproject to view the main subproject window. With the subproject tab out of the way, let's move on now to the stages tab. This tab will contain all the tasks that are related to each project stage that makes up your main project. You can specify when each stage starts, is due, and ends in the corresponding columns. In the stage column will be where you can select from the dropdown one of the predefined stages from the stages setup window. Next to stage is the task column. Here you will be able to select a specific task that needs to be completed for the stage. Note, you can have the same task for multiple different stages. In the description field is where you can give a description to your task. If you would like to provide your task with a specific ID, you can do so by entering in a value in the unique ID field. In the plan cost column is where you can specify how much you think the task is expected to cost. Please note that this field is for your reference only. The invoiced amount fields for AR and AP will display the total amount of all the current open AR and AP invoices that are linked to the project. Moreover, the open amount fields for AR and AP will display the combined total of all the open AR and AP documents respectively, besides the invoices that are linked to the project. Moving on to the percentage field, this is where you can enter how much of the total project the task covers. After finishing a task, the percentage will be applied to the percent complete field towards the top. Once you do finish a stage, you will need to check the finish checkbox in order to indicate that the stage is fully complete. Next, in the owner field, you will be able to select a specific employee to assign to the task. Finally, in the stage dependence fields, 
If you enter a stage into any of the fields, the current task cannot be completed until the prior stage has been completed. Under the main table portion of the stage tab will be several additional tables that can be opened. The first additional table is the open issues table. In this section, you can assign various open issues to each different task by highlighting a row from the above table and updating the information in the open issues table. This section is useful for keeping track of all of your open issues for each different task. The section below that is the attachment section. Here you will be able to attach various different files to each task. Moving on now to the document section, you will be able to apply any document you want to the specific task. Any sales or purchasing amounts will appear in either the invoiced or open amount fields on the main table portion of the stages tab. The following section is the work order section. Here you will be able to assign production orders to the project task. Note, in order to assign the production order to the project, a financial project must be selected in the financial project field, and on the production order itself, the same financial project must be selected in the project field. The last section is the activity section, which is where you can assign activities to the current selected task. Now let's move on to the summary tab. Once you begin to fill in information about your project, as well as assign documents to your project, you will notice that some values on the summary tab will update. The budget section will display all the planned costs as well as any AP documents related to the current budget. This section does not include information related to the subprojects, if there are any present. The accumulated budget section will contain the same information as the budget section, however, it will take into account the amounts from the various subprojects. Now that we have described the budget sections, let's take a look at the profit value section of the window. In the potential amount field, you can specify the potential profit amount of the current project or subproject. The rest of the fields correspond to the total AR amounts from the current project. The accumulated profit value section, just like for the budgets, will contain the same information that is present in the profit value section, however, it will also take into account the amounts from the various subprojects that may be attached to the project. Furthermore, the work order cost section will display information that pertains to any production orders that are assigned to the current project. The last section is the date section. In it will be the due date of the project, the actual date the project has been closed, as well as the number of days overdue the actual closing date is from the due date. With the summary tab out of the way, let's go over the remarks tab. Here you will be able to enter in any miscellaneous information you want about the project. Moreover, on the attachments tab, you will be able to attach any files you want to the specific project. Please be aware that this video is only an overview of the project management module. Additional videos will be available that provide a more in-depth look into how data is entered and utilized on each tab of the window. This month's tip of the day can be useful if you love to use keyboard shortcuts. In SAP Business One, you have the ability to assign any module to a function button on your keyboard. In order to assign modules to your function buttons, navigate to Tools, My Shortcuts, and then Customize. Here you will be able to select a specific function button as well as assign a particular module to the keyboard shortcut. After you allocate several modules to your function buttons, on the list tab, you can view what each function button does. As a side note, you can also view each shortcut by going to Tools, My Shortcuts, and Shortcuts to see what each function button does according to how you define them in your system. Please note that these shortcuts will only be available for your user only. The project management feature within SAP Business One is a great tool for keeping track of all of your costs and revenues that are incurred on a particular project. Join us as we help you learn more about what SAP Business One has to offer by clicking the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a new video. As an SAP Gold Partner, LBSI can help you take full advantage of everything the system has to offer. To get in contact with us, 
visit our website at www.lbsi.com and navigate to the contact link. You can also email us at sales at lbsi.com for sales related inquiries or SAP support at lbsi.com if you're an existing client in need of support assistance.